We asked our Twitter followers earlier in the show, can the two and four Seahawks be fixed and the results are hot off the press? It's not looking so hot. 35.5% say yes, a whopping 64.5% wow. say no. We had to enlist a Super Bowl champ yeah. for this conversation. Mm. Hello, Mark Schlereth. Hi. Good How to are see you. Yeah, Thanks good. for being good with us. Be here. What's did up, the, big boy? Did How the, you doing, Stephen? Did the people get it right? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think they got it right. Now, listen, you've got to look at the Seahawks. In six games, they've been ahead in five of those in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. Right now, there have been injuries to Marshawn Lynch. They have tried to figure out a way to work in their tight end that they mm -hmm. traded for. Their offensive line at times have been, it's been abysmal. But really, the biggest issue over the last couple of weeks has been the Legion of Boom. Yeah. It's been the Legion of Boom, mm -hmm. the best secondary in the NFL over the last two, three seasons, that's what's let them down the last couple of weeks. I mean, they let, go, they let Greg Olson go down the seam, yeah. and, and nobody covers him. I mean, Richard Sherman is over there looking at uh, uh, Earl Thomas going, dude, what? And Earl Thomas going, dude, what? I mean, that's, that's the miscommunication, and maybe you can, you can point to Cam Chancellor not being there in the, in, throughout the preseason, all these different things. I think they can tie that together. I still think secondary-wise, when you look at the players that they have, they're still plenty good enough to fix those things. Those are mental errors. Those are mental mistakes. Those things will get fixed. Have they put themselves in too big of a hole? That's the mm. question you have to ask yourself. But Arizona's sitting at four and two right now. Yeah. I don't think they're out of this thing. I really don't. I think they can fix that, and I think they can get more balance on the offensive side of the ball. But I think they fix that secondary, and they don't lose the last couple of games. They're sitting at four and two as opposed to two and four. Stephen A. That's what I've been saying. Yeah. I mean, I did, you listen. They, they, you know, they're just too talented. And if you really think about it, who did they lose? I mean, they really didn't lose anybody. But when I think about what they've gained, adding Jimmy Graham to that offense mm -hmm. is a big deal to me. I think that when you look at their defense, the nucleus of it is in place. You still got a cat like Bennett on a defensive line. You still have the secondary in Richard Sherman. Certainly losing Byron Maxwell and Lee having him depart to go to Philadelphia. I think if you look at anything right now, it's how well is Kerry Williams fitting in in the secondary opposite Richard Sherman because everybody else seems to be in place. And then you take into account the holdout, Cam Chancellor being gone. He's essentially the captain of your defense. He's the one that makes sure everybody is where they're supposed to be, et cetera. And he wasn't there, you know, for training camp and obviously the first two games of the season. So it's going to take some time to gel. They are running out of time, no question about it. They've got to get it going. But I don't think, I think that outside of just going out there and winning, there's really nothing to worry about. I think these guys will get it together because they're accustomed to being together. Mm -hmm. I just think that something's missing from their ilk because I don't think, if, I don't think they fully recovered from losing that mm -hmm. Super Bowl the way that they lost it. I think that there's been a dissipation in terms of the level of trust they once had in Pete Carroll and their coaching staff. But I think they'll ultimately get it together because they don't want to be on the outside looking in. The mission is too great and the personnel is in place to get it done. Cam Chancellor and those boys will never get what they want. He'll never get his money, nor will a lot of guys get what they want if they end up falling apart this year after what they did the previous mm. two years. I think they recognize that they'll get it together and I think they'll win tonight. Okay, back to Mark. I agree with Stephen A's take on this. This was his Super Bowl pick uh -huh. from the NFC. This is a troubled football team to me, and it has been from day one of this year. And you've been through this before with your Super Bowl experience. There can be a Super Bowl hangover or residue from a loss cool. such as the one they suffered. So it's not the who that you lost as a team because they lost nobody. It's the what you lost, which is your edge. Whatever that intangible thing is, mm -hmm. you lost your winning edge. And they have. It's, it's how did we do that? It's, it's the play or two in the fourth quarter that you have to make. They're, they're now a minus 28 in the fourth quarter. That is mind-blowing to me that you, you have blown four fourth quarter leads in, in your four losses when in the first three quarters combined you're a plus 43 for the season well that's 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 dominating that's that that would make you 
potentially 6-0, and and save for the wrong call made against the Lions, you remember, on the Monday night sure. in Seattle, they're 1-5. and five. And the only thing they have to hang their helmet on right now is one win at home over Jimmy Clausen when Jay Cutler had pulled his hamstring. Yeah. That's all you have to show me so far. Now, again, it's, it's still early, and as you point out, the division is still open for business. You, 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 anybody right. could emerge from this point right. on. Uh, my point is, as I told Stephen A. early, the 49ers aren't a joke to me, and they are an arch rival. There's bad blood here between these teams, even though the 49ers have lost a whole lot of who's this year on defense. But Kaepernick's still there, and he has some weapons, and they've played a little better over the last three games. Yeah. They've been competitive, even with the great Aaron Rodgers at home. It was 17-3, to and then, of course, they beat the Ravens. They went up to the Giants and lost only 30-27. So they're competitive, and I believe they're going to be competitive tonight. And if there's no winning edge on the part of the defending NFC champs tonight, I think they could lose this game. Yeah, I, there's no question they could, and Kaepernick is playing much, much, much better, better the last yeah. couple of weeks. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, he had a smile on his face yeah. and a loss to the Giants, he and I did. was like, wow, he smiled. Yeah. I mean, that's a good sign for Colin Kaepernick, and he's played a lot good better. Point. So um, they do have some energy there. There is some, something building there mm -hmm. for the San Francisco 49ers. I look at the Seattle Seahawks, man. This was, in my mind, the most intimidating football team on the face of the planet. And they have lost some of that edge. You're right about that. And some of it is fourth quarter conservative, just going conservative, where it used okay. to be, let's just go out there and shove it down your throat and there's nothing you're going to do about it. Now it's, hey, let's hand it off three times. Let's eat some clock. Let's just rely. And then we've had the breakdowns on the defensive yep. side in that secondary. So they have got to get this mentality back of, we're the bullies. But now you have to go prove it. Okay. One of the things that I said, uh, Mark, uh, prior to your arrival, I said it earlier in the show, um, you know, actually not early in the show. I said it early in the week. If you remember, Skip, I was like, where's Richard Sherman? Yep. I, I don't understand. I don't see the same Richard Sherman. Well, I'm reading an article right now in the Seattle Times, and it's highlighting how pro football focus has Richard Sherman ranked as the 82nd best cornerback in the league right now. <laughs> Just based on some of the things that they saw, they pointed out the 11-yard pass to Corey Brown or the 32-yard pass to Greg Olson or the pass interference on a 52-yard toss in Green Bay. They just talk about the absence of interceptions, deflected passes, how he doesn't seem to be himself on the field, in front of the camera, on Twitter or whatever the case may be. I called it the Rough Rider, the dog in them. They called it something else. But you've got the newspapers in Seattle highlighting, where is he? We don't see the same guy. Mm. And I'm going to reiterate this again, Mark. They lose a game. And Richard Sherman, forget about him laughing on the field and all of that other stuff, because we don't know what that was about. Somebody could have said something very, very funny, even in, even in the immediate aftermath of a loss. But in the locker, what stood out to me, he's in front of the camera, and he's like, everything's all right. It's going to be just fine. Just go back, watch some film. We'll be okay. And I'm like, really? You know, that, that, that's not the dude that, 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 that I saw when he was trying to let the world know, y'all are ignoring the best cornerback in the game, or yep. one of the best cornerbacks in the game. I'm right here. Look at me. Notice me. I'm a bad boy. You know, I, I, I don't see that guy. And so let's be clear. We're not knocking him because of his ability. We're knocking him because we know how elite his ability is. And we're not seeing the same persona that seemed to have driven that ability in the past. We're not seeing that from Richard Sherman right now, and I think that's a fact as well, but I suspect that issue's going to be alleviated yeah. tonight. Well, I tell you what, success sometimes is much more difficult to deal with than failure. You've had a mm -hmm. ton of success yep. over the last couple of years, and the next thing you know, guys want to get paid. They did. Guys feel as though they're not respected. Uh, you lose some guys that maybe nobody knows. Maybe it's a special team, or maybe it's mm -hmm. somebody that was really the glue that yeah, held the I locker agree. room together. All those little things become big things, mm -hmm. and I think that's what we're seeing in Seattle right now, and it's really hard. It's one thing to say, hey, we're going to fix this, we're going to get it right, but if you're not right in that locker room, it, you, you can give me a lot of lip service until I see it produce results on a football field. Man, I have to just look at it and go, no, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I think this is a big game for Seattle. Tonight. I do, too. I think it's a huge game I, for I mean, Seattle. If you lose this, I think you're done.
I don't think I would agree with that. Factor. No question. Did you have a quick story you wanted to share? Oh, yeah. You know, I'm listening to you guys, and you guys do a great <laughs> job with the Tom Brady stuff. And Skip, uh, Skip uh, to reacting to, to Stephen A., yeah. Stephen A. had talked about how quickly, how precipitous the fall is from mm -hmm. greatness to being, you know, an also-ran. My last year in the league, after 12 seasons, probably the first three, four games of the year, I was playing as good as I had ever played. And I was thinking to myself, I'm going to re-sign another three-year deal and play for 15 years. I hurt my knee, and the next thing I know, I am struggling. And I'll never forget this. This is when I knew it was time to retire. I'm sitting in a film room, and we're watching a practice. And it's just basically a walk-through type of practice. You know, it's um, no pads, mm -hmm. and we just all have sweatshirts on, and you couldn't see the numbers. And I'm watching, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, who is that? Who is that playing left guard? That dude blows. Oh. Oh, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's one of these rookies or yeah. one of these, uh, one of these practice squad guys we have. And then I realize, oh no, that's me. And it was, I mean, it hit me like a ton of bricks. And I'm like, I'm not helping my team anymore. I can't play this game at the level how I used to be able to play. 35. And like, you had how many operations? 44. <laughs> No, it's 29. 29 <laughs> operations. Well, I had 28, I, and then I went in and, and oh, I was done, and I had my 29th, oh, my and, and that goodness. was it. But, yeah, but it, it happened, I mean, like All of that, a and I was looking going, I can't play this game anymore. You know Harsh reality. Said, Father but, time's undefeated. Mm, yeah, that, that is for sure, but I guarantee you one thing. That dude is a freak he's show, a, Tom Brady, and he is so playing great football. So if anyone's going to do it. All right. All right. Mark, thank you so much. You got Great it, to guys. see you, as Pleasure always. Pleasure to be here again.